If you're part of an organic group like a museum or a research institution, you'll see a list of organic groups that you belong to, and within that, the the organic group um, has different flags. So, group defaults, public and private apply. Um, for all of your um, general permit applications, just use group defaults um, or public. Private really only applies to archaeological sites where there's uh, sensitivities over the site locations. Okay, save and add another will allow you to go and add another site in your batch. Um, save is the normal save. Under detailed mapping, let's just show you what uh, goes on here. This is the open layer, and this is the, the way that you can create a much more detailed map of the site. So you could draw the the polygon of the uh, the earth, for instance. So Rulant and Harrington. Let's switch to the hybrid map and let's zoom back the full screen view and zoom down into Harrington Street. There it is. Okay. Um, now we'll deal more with site recording in a um, another tutorial and there's an earlier tutorial as well de dealing a little bit with site recording but um, you can have not only the points in the GMAP module but also the whole earth and um, at, at the very minimum we'd like to have a point for the sites mapped on SARS but uh, if they do um, contain more than just a point shell, shell middens, uh, battlefields, uh, burial grounds and so on th then the best thing to do is map the entire earth and we will be working with the municipalities as SARS goes forward in providing the urban layers uh, which will give you a very detailed um, overlay to pick out the, the the correct polygon but since this works very well for planning um, it's pr pretty easy to map the earth um, and uh, zoom back right out again um, and you can hit save just like the cases you can upload a KML file or define the map directly using the WKT format as well rather than drawing it hit save and that is it for creating a site very importantly is to fill in the first site recording um, because the basic information on a site uh, is not usually sufficient um, for a permit application um, unless um, you know we, we're permitting on an older record and there's additional information that has uh, it will be captured by the, the heritage officer under certain arrangements. So in general, you would create your site and go directly to new recording. I'll explain what the other two links are in a minute. Uh, new recording. This is your first site recording for the site. Uh, pick the dates you're recording it on. So today's date. Just put today's time as well, and then it automatically links it to that site. This is the primary recording. Okay, if you take that flag off, the certain views back at the site where it's pulling information from the site recording will not show up. Uh, so this works well if you have 10 recordings and you can pick one of them as your main main recording that you'd like the information to be filtered on. Project title only apl applies to recording projects. Again, not usually relevant to um, general permit applications. But if you uh, work for a, a particular team, um, then you might you might fill in the project title. Case reference. Um, this is uh, again used for impact assessors where the case has already been created. Uh, we will be linking the site to the case once we've created the case. So don't fill that in when you uh, filling in permit applications because uh, your case comes. Um, after your your site. Alternative code, alternative name, that's pretty self-explanatory. It gives you the flexibility to define the site in various ways and, uh, and the common name typically used for a local name. Recorder, I'll just use the John Demo name. Uh, let's just call that up. There we go. Always remember to ensure that your node ID matches or comes up with a match. Direction, directions to site, again very self-explanatory, site comments describe the site 
and admin comments typically used for um, various um, issues that uh, you know copy the form obtain site record from so and so those sorts of things in the admin or photos still need uploading things like that recording media can pick any of those that are relevant generally digital photos are the minimum requirement these days uh, the language module has been enabled on Saurus and we will be rolling that out, that out probably towards the end of 2013 in translating the interface into the 11 official languages um, and uh, providing access to actually capturing content in different languages. The structures, that's what we're busy with at the moment, so the date this uh, building was built, let's make it um, 1st of January 1950, it'll make the building 62 years old, a bit. The architect, um, uh, let's see if i uh, just use any one of these. Uh, the builder, okay, um, and of course what you're doing here is uh, enabling the um, filtering of architects against the the buildings later down the line. The architectural style, oh, I'm just going to fill in whatever, um, let's say, um, <sighs> gosh, let's pick something that's actually on the system. Um, okay, I'm going to leave this blank, it doesn't seem to be picking out, I suspect there's a user rights issue, but um, I'll fix that up in a second. Um, but once you search for the various styles that have been entered, um, you'll see the search finder bring, bringing those up. Uh, similarly with the building type and the current use, um, let's say it's a church, okay, and previous uses perhaps a, uh, let's see, a restaurant or something like that. Okay, there we go. Let's say farm residence. Great. Okay, those are just terms that are fairly fluid in the system based on the imported information um, from all the databases. Um, the site condition, um, it's fairly subjective as well. Um, archaeology, rock art, paleontology, all the other tabs don't necessarily apply um, unless you had a historical archaeology and a structure. So then you could fill in those fields in the archaeology section. Um, and if this was a fossil site, then you would go straight to paleontology um, uh, or if it was a shipwreck. Uh, fill in the various fields that apply there. So the general structure of a site recording is the general tab applies to all sites and then this very specific fields within different types of sites are under the tabs and then once you get to the images you everything is very familiar once again so we can use the uh, advanced upload field just like we did in cases. Pick some pictures out here and Let's take those two, start the upload there, and go off to our attachments. Um, you also notice that we've taken away the restrictions on the size of files since we last recorded the tutorials. This is because we've now um, had the start of the process of obtaining a, a network attached storage device, a series of them. Um, so we'll be storing very large sizes of um, data uh, through Cyrus as well. So the nest, uh, the restriction of 800 by 600 pixels doesn't apply anymore. Um, attachments, the site record, uh, the site recording form, other documentation might apply. Again, if this is a case or case related site recording, don't go and upload documents here unless it's specific to the site rather than the case. Um, but typical uses of the files here are the site recordings that you write up in the field. You can choose between a public version of that file or if there's very particular information you don't want um, out in the domain then upload it to secure docs. Neither of the two fields are uh, included in the index on Saurus so it won't come up in the uh, general index um, but once someone accesses the site recording if you haven't uploaded to secure docs then it will be available for download by others. Um, generally not too much of, of an issue. Let's hit save. So we have a primary recording for our site um, and we've 
pretty much covered everything we need. We can hyperlink back to the site on the site reference um, and you can browse through the different tabs. There's a little bug at the moment in that it's capturing a, a, a field in the RockArt setup. So the RockArt tab does appear but just ignore that at this stage. Hopefully we'll be able to fix that uh, sometime in the future. Uh, your images, if you uploaded more than four images, you'll see all the images appear under the tab on the site recording. Um, you can go back to the site as well and you'll notice the images that we uploaded are drawing through to the site and all that's doing is taking the four uh, latest images from all site recordings and creating a view on the site level. Uh, below the site itself, if we filled in the site comments, admin comments and other fields on the site recording, you would have seen the information come up in a block here below the site. So that's the that's why the primary recording um, uh, has some impact on the on what you see in the site. Uh, it's a bit different to Wikipedia. We've decided to you know use it as a management system. So the sites aren't just a basic page where it's continuously edited. Um, but for objects, that is the case because there's not much sense in making many, many recordings around uh, around objects, but the condition assessments are one-to-many relationships. Okay, let's uh, stop this chapter here and then um, we'll continue on to the next chapter in a minute.